Well, thanks everyone for you know uh, coming. Um, actually, today we have uh, this uh, session. The title is uh, Shifting Places, Exchanging Public Art uh, Practice Between Mumbai and Hong Kong. So maybe I, I give a really brief uh, um, background of what, what's going on, why we are all here. Then uh, I will pass on to uh, Claudio. Claudio and uh, from Mumbai, from Art Oxygen. He's uh, the co-founder and also the co-curator uh, co of Art Oxygen, who does a lot um, of art projects in the public uh, spaces in Mumbai. And also they're bringing some of their projects to other places, um, for example, last year to Korea and other places in the world. And then uh, Momo Le Mei Ping, uh, next to me, she actually is um, also teaching at Baptist University. And last year and this year, um, Momo and also Lok Lo Chiki, the, these two Hong Kong artists uh, and some other artists who joined the program went to Mumbai for a public art festival. Um, so. Uh, and I am Clara, by the way, Clara Chung. Um, I'm uh, the co-founder and co-curator of CNG Art Partment. So um, last year, some of us um, went to Mumbai to join this uh, Encounters Public Art Festival organized uh, by uh, Art Oxygen. And we had fantastic experiences. So later on, I'm sure the artists can show you um, a lot of the uh, interesting elements they found. And then hopefully we can also have the time to compare some of the um, difference, differences and uh, similarities in the two places, Mumbai and Hong Kong, because um, on one hand, we this is both places are definitely really populated, <laughs> really crowded, and with a lot of uh, urban development in in Hong Kong, also like a lot of redevelopment, and we are dealing with actually a lot of problems which are, which are quite similar, but at the same time, definitely we have a read, um, a lot of different kinds of cultures and different kind of uh, daily life activities uh, on the streets. So um, perhaps we can move on with uh, to start with Claudio, um, telling us more about Art Oxygen and Encounters, yeah? Yes, uh, good evening to everyone. Thank you, Clara, for the lovely introduction. And thank you to the organizers of Art Basel to have me here as a contributor as a speaker to this uh, on this occasion. Um, I'm obviously not Indian. You can pretty much make it out from my from my features. But I've moved to Mumbai seven years ago. Uh, seven years ago, it was the 2007. It was the time in which the art market in in India was at its peak. Um, we I used to, along with the uh, co-founder of Art Oxygen, we used to go to open an exhibitions and see lots of work by Indian artists which was inspired and uh, originated by, by the city, by what happens in its street, by the relations that happen uh, in the open. So uh, the two of us, along with a group of artists, decided to bring the artworks outside, back outside from where they actually originated. Um, we started in uh, 2010, we had our first public art project. We had our fifth edition in uh, February this, this year. Clara, uh, um, Meeping, and uh, uh, Lochi Kit were some of the artists who participated. The main focus of our project is to see and understand what happens when artists and their practice get outside of the studio, outside of the gallery, and deal with issues which are specific of the city of Mumbai in our case. Um, in our first encounters, as Clara mentioned, is, is the title of the project, we had uh, five Indian artists. In 2013, we had 17 artists, some of them coming from Australia, some from Hong Kong, some from Italy, Spain and Germany. So it's a project which is expanding and, and growing. Last year we had a little bit less uh, uh, artists. We still had 12 participating artists. But it's something which is uh, kind of organically growing, uh, notwithstanding the difficulties of the art of the Indian support for, for the arts. Unlike Hong Kong and many other Asian countries, there is no arts council in India. Um, so there is no public funding for, for the arts. There is not even recognition of what value art can have from, the, from a governmental point of view. We have um, 
a thriving art market, galleries in, uh, in uh, India and in Mumbai. Uh, some of them are very well established and are doing very well. Some of them are also present here in Art Basel for, uh, on the occasion. Um, there are plenty of initiatives from individual initiatives and uh, artists or artist collectives which on one side face the difficulty of dealing with the uh, uncertainty, with the lack of support, of sustainability. On the other side, they have complete freedom to develop and uh, um, inquire their own practice and see what happens also when the, the, their works are put in contact with a different audience, which is not the the, the, what, the, the one belonging to the, to the art world. Um, this is a, just a very uh, brief introduction to what we do and why we do that. Um, I have put together a series of, a selection of the works which were undertaken during the last editions of Encounters. It's just a selection by a group of Indian artists we have been working with. As I said, Encounters deals with issues affecting the city, the city's everyday life. In Encounter 2011, the issue at stake was water. Bombay has plenty of water during the monsoon times. Sometimes the city itself or part of parts of the city get completely flooded, but then when the rainy season is over, then you have shortage of water available, not just for uh, the peripheral, or the outskirt of the city, but also in the very center, in the most central area of the city itself. This is Tushar Jog, hypohydro hyper race. He used a traditional uh, performance. It's called the Gokul Admin, which is a pyramid, made a human pyramid, but instead of having a, a, a jar on top of it where prices are kept, he uh, made actually a fountain out of it with a, with a, a, a self-activated pump. Paradip Mishra instead intervened in one fort, which is in the coastline of Mumbai, which is actually facing uh, a, a creek, so a maritime area. His intention by putting those flags, which are depicting animals living in that area, was to create a connection between the built heritage and the natural heritage in the city. 2012, the issue at stake was the issue of land. Pretty much like in, in uh, Hong Kong, land is a big issue in, uh, in Mumbai. There is lack of it, it's very pricey, and uh, speculation also uh, happens quite, quite often. This is Mansi Bhatt. She actually traveled with a bulldozer from the northern tip of the city to the southern tip of the city. She landed in one place which a pretty well-known place for political protesting and activism, and she buried herself in the ground, in the soil. This is Project Apotnis instead. She worked on footpaths. There is still lot of, lots of activities happening in the footpaths of the city, so much that most of them are taken over by, as you can see, by shop, by fruits and vegetable sellers. What she did was she draw a line, a white line, you can, you can uh, uh, see it, a little bit of an effort, to mark the areas which are still available for walking. This is Anupam Singh instead. In a, uh, his work is entitled Ghar. So he has been worked, working with uh, a community of um, kiln workers that make bricks and um, most of them are migrants from the different part of, of the country. And he asked them, he actually made this mold for a brick with the uh, uh, writing Gar. The, the character that you can see is Gar, which means home in uh, Hindi. And out of it, he made a whole lot of bricks. Out of it, uh, uh, he made an installation at the end. This is Rina Kallat, Encounters 2013. The issue at stake in uh, uh, Encounters 2013 was power intended both as physical 
electricity, physical power, and also as energy emanating from, uh, from the relations among people. What she did in this case was uh, a questioning of hierarchies and structures of power by making a, a, a podium, which is actually where the, 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 the heights of the, of the numbers are actually scrambled up and, uh, up and down. Mansig, but again, she did a performance on uh, one promenade in, in Mumbai, in which she actually, first she got buried inside uh, uh, soil, now she, at the shot after this shows her dipping inside the, the sea of Mumbai, she intended as one of the main sources of energy, vital energy of the city which has been dilapidated. This is the, our latest encounters, 2014, which happened in February. The subject and the theme was the theme of air. Air intended, again, as physical element and as an element physically connecting each inhabitants of the, of the city to one another. Air is something we all breathe almost the same air. So air has this kind of democratic value or, or is a democratic factor which unites uh, uh, all the citizens of the same, of the same urban context. This is Hema, Hema Upadhyay. She draw, uh, uh, with the help of some craftsmen, um, some sentences related to a uh, relationship among people on these tiny um, rice grains. This is Vibagalotra, which wrote a series of sentences taken from uh, uh, Buddhism uh, uh, <coughs> script, scriptures, and she made white flag out of them. And this is again Rina Kallat. She actually uh, took a series of letters from friends of hers, and through she stenciled them, and that with salt, she displayed them on the shore of uh, uh, one of the of Mumbai's beaches. And you can see the picture of the stenciled writing getting uh, washed away by the by the sea waves. Thank you. That's Thank you, Claudio, for introducing um, so many different projects by Indian artists in the previous encounters. Um, actually, the, the role of Hong Kong artists started um, probably from last year because uh, some of us collaborate with uh, Art Oxygen and went to Mumbai to join the Public Art Festival um, last year in Mumbai. And then after um, joining their art festival last year, we also brought some of the documentation back to Hong Kong and did a sharing with the local audience. And this time, this year, in 2014, um, we tried to do a bit more um, besides uh, doing just the documentation exhibition and the sharing. Um, some of the artists actually also improvised some of the art projects earlier on in Mumbai, improvise a bit and also show um, in the public space in Hong Kong. And I, I guess um, it is really interesting to see, um, it's not just, um, there are so many different kinds of work in the festival. Some of them are really um, um, nice, and uh, they are kind of like a display in the public space, and kind of um, also like interact with the audience in a more remote way, but then there are also different kinds of uh, interactivity in other projects also. For example, uh, Low Chi Kid, your work also, I think, to me, I think it is really intimate because you have a lot of dialogues in yeah. throughout the whole project. So maybe it is more abstract. We, we don't really see a lot of the visuals, like, in the outcome, but then there are a lot of abstract um, intimacy yes. in, in the project. Can you show us some of the, yeah, the works sure. you did before, please? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay, thanks. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Lo Chikit, and I'm going to <coughs> introduce like two projects of mine that I have done in Mumbai, and also in Hong Kong and other places. And other places. And the first one is Star's Project. I can you can see from the show. And actually, I, I have to talk a bit about the story first. Uh, I've been living in Mong Kok area in, for three years. As you, you might know, in, in Mong Kok, the, the street is super busy, and many people on the street clouded, and the street is very narrow. And then even, you know, sometime when I get on the street, like after 1, 1 a.m., the street's still a lot of lights, the street lights, and the billboard <coughs> is everywhere. So 
I uh, actually one time a few years ago, I joined an exhibition during Christmas, and the exhibition is talks about uh, the decorating light. Then I start thinking about uh, the the people living in this area. Like, what does it look like? What does a star looks like in their mind? So I just start a very simple project that I have to work on the street to, you know, to talk to the people on the street and encounter them, and ask them to draw me a star. And you can see from the from the uh, <coughs> All the the yellow part, I the people just simply draw me a star, and then I I walk within a map, and every time and then I encounter someone on on the map, on on the street, and then I would drop l like a little low tech GPS, and and I drop the location, and at the end I will form a something like um, uh it, yeah this this. This one is the first time I did it in Hong Kong, and then I, I also did it in other places. It's like w when I encounter someone, and then I just drop it like one by one, and I will make a video out of it. It's like you can see from the s this one. Whenever I the video is the beginning of the video is the like a dark screen, and then there's a a star light up one by one until the last uh, last star there's a light up. So this is the very simple uh, project that I have done in in Hong Kong, also in Mumbai. In one time, I got a chance to join an exhibition in Israel, so I also go to the uh, Bethlehem because of the you know there's a very well known story in the Bible about a star. So actually, different different places they will bring me in some different approach or strategy to you know to work with the people on the street, and after. Comparing the experiences from different places, I really think that in the people in Mumbai is very open and they are always very curious about what you do. They're open to talk with you, and very easy to start the conversation. Compared to Hong Kong, it's like because there's too many commercial activity on the street, so uh, like selling your insurance or sell your broadband or something, you know, very. Anything you know, a plan about the telephone, and then whenever you come across a person, and you will be you know like turning on your safety mode. So it's like uh, very hard to do it. Especially I did it in Hong Kong. I I just simply go there to ask somebody, can you draw me a star? I got refused like so many times, and you know it's it's not that easy. But then when I did it in Mumbai. I can get a lot of stars like without they they're not even <laughs> questioning and then draw oh what 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 is that about and then they are very open to you know talk to me and ask what are you doing and oh and then talk other things and and I think the you know the the activity in that street or the people get used to the that space and then they will change the be their behavior in that in that space so I this is I think. Mumbai is a very ideal place, place for doing like something uh, about public art or you know encounter strangers, talk to strangers, something like this. Projects like that. Okay, so I also did it in Mumbai and yeah, I am in Hong Kong. This is another uh, project that I just did in in Mumbai this year. I actually I just simply bring the stories of the Indians who live in Hong Kong, and I just go everywhere you can come across an Indian. You can find Indian easily, like uh, Chongqing Mansion or the Hindu temple in Happy Valley, and or the Sheikh Temple, you know, Hin uh, Indian club, and anywhere. And then I just ask, look for someone who already moved to Hong Kong, and I ask them, uh, "Can you tell me a story about uh, before you moved to Hong Kong, like that this happened in India?" And I tell them, I told them I will bring your story back to your homeland, and I, I will just spray it in the public space. So I use a stencil, but it's not a paper stencil, so it's like a sticker stencil. So it takes times to, you know, really did it like one, at least an hour for each 
sentence. I pick a sentence from their interviews. So you can see it, like this is the, the people that I interview. And this is one of the... Actually, uh, after I did this project, I found that there's actually very... In, in Hong Kong, such an international city, it's like you can come across different world in like just five minutes from your home. And that is, you know, I, I, I even I know much more than the first time I, because uh, 2013, 13. I have been to Mumbai once. And then I think that I, I, I have a concept or an impression about India. Then when I talk to the Indian in, in Hong Kong, it opened up my another, you know, understanding of the whole culture. So I think, you know, this kind of project you can, you know, yeah, just in Hong Kong is very ideal place to, you know, come across or know other uh, culture very easily. And yeah, this is how I did. I will pick a um, different, uh, based on the story itself, and I will think of a, you know, a suitable uh, place that's uh, specific for the story and just play a transparent sentence there. And in the, in the beginning, you cannot see the, uh, the stencil. I mean, I mean you, can, you cannot see the sentence in the public space uh, because it's transparent. It's just like a glue, a spray some glue, which is uh, letters. And then after a while, over time, you, 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 the dust collect on the surface, stick on the surface of the glue, and then the, the, the word, the story will appear little, little by little. So it's like a very personal story, suddenly of someone else you don't know, and then suddenly appear in the public space. So um, yeah, this is, and I, I think it's, they're just awesome. You know, they, they are very curious and then start talking with you and then they will try to, or think about how to help you to, you know, to do what you want to do. Although some of them maybe not totally understand what you're t doing, but then they are very, you know, in, in, in India, it's like, I'm already very confident about it. doing this kind of project. People is like very willing to help you. Yeah, so this is the, okay. Yeah, this is the two, st two story, I mean, two project that I have done in Hong Kong and also other places. And yeah, yeah this is uh, the, what I want to share with you today. Thank you, Lok. Um, and I will ask you again later on about some more interesting stories oh, you, yeah. encou you encountered. If I say in on. Cantonese, I, I can say it very easily. Oh, yeah, maybe yeah. later on. No, no, it's okay. Yeah, but um, well, then how about Momola? Maybe because um, you also went to Mumbai last time, and also this year you you went there. But um, actually, it seems you you are having you are you you have brought different kinds of projects to Mumbai. How yeah? What did you do, and how do you like decide? Um, how to encounter the, the public audience. Um, uh, regarding um, exchange project, I'm interested in um, um, how the culture and uh, exchange value between um, two places. So uh, for the first time I went to Mumbai, I bought um, 30 fine objects uh, which were uh, made in India. In fact, I found it in Hong Kong. So I bought the 30 objects to um, Mumbai and then asked the children to um, shape the outlook of the objects um, by using the local, I mean the India clay. And uh, um, I think it's, it's interesting that um, it's not very difficult to collect or, or you know, um, to ask people to draw your projects. So I, they, they have a lot of time and interest in, in everything. This happens in the streets. So um, the children uh, were asked to um, shape the outlook of the objects. And uh, at the same time, it, um, the images of the real objects was you know, deleted. And uh, which is the objects uh, by clay that's not functioned anymore, uh, like the real objects, the daily objects. So, um, and after, so I teach them how to do it. Um, yeah. So and after that, they can, and you know, took away the real objects, and uh, just leave the clay, and the dust to dust, ashes to ashes, and you know, would turn back on the ground of the park, you know, in the uh, in the park. And another, uh, the next time, the, this year, the project is so. Uh, the title is you know the. 
the fast food title is the is yeah. there love in the air? Mm -hmm. So I concerned about a story, a real story. I I always keep in my mind a long time ago. It's related to um, a mother and a child. Um, the story happens in a prison. The mother was in charge. I uh, know um, a charge of um, murder, and uh, she gave birth uh, in the prison. And when the child grew up, um, he tried to get. Um, you know, get the mother out of the prison. Um, so I made two music boxes and placed it in the beach um, in Bombay. And uh, there's quite a lot of the children and the parents bought the, you know, and listen to the, the music box. And the two music, uh, one is very famous in Hong Kong or traditional Chinese song, Yu Guang Guang, The Moon Night, uh, or the, you know, um, Mom is the best in the world. And the uh, people just, you know, by playing the music box and uh, release the music and they can listen. Um, it happens like this. But it's not a lot of girls working, you know, around, you know, and they all keep in, uh, in indoors. So, so um, in Hong Kong, so, um, actually I was not in Hong Kong at that time. Um, Kara helped me to invite one couple a uh, local India um, um, to woman and, and a, a man just sitting in the exhibitions. And um, they share their ideas, what is the love, or you think about they have love or not, and share everything about the exchange idea. I always think that um, you know, quite a lot of exchange projects um, is controlled by the artists. I think it's just like a conceptual work. I, I, I keep the concept, and I do not know um, actually the India couples, what they are going to do with the, you know, the audience and the environment and telling um, what kind of story they have been living in uh, Hong Kong quite a long time. So, and this is the first time I saw them now. <laughs> On the TV <laughs> Even if you don't know, don't know them, yeah. Yeah. And, That's it. Okay. And it was interesting because, um, oh, let's, we can go back. Um, they, actually the couple, they lived uh, this is the the site is a cattle depot artist village. So the couple actually lived in the district for seven to ten years, like for a long time. But they never really go into this artist village, which is probably not very uncommon because even some Hong Kong neighborhoods they, they don't go into the village. Uh, so we we do have another kind of problem there. <laughs> but then um, so they were they were very nice. They also even prepared um, some computer like PowerPoint presentation. To, to share their culture with us. Yeah, what, what do you think about that experience? About the inclusion of the Indian couple yeah. and, and the because presentation. I we had some discussion. Uh, yes, them, during the presentation, uh, <laughs> uh, we had quite some discussion because they had this kind of romantic vision of, of India as, as a country. Whilst well, the elections are just over in the, in the last couple of days in, in India and the, the outcome will be will be public in a few in a few days. Mm -hmm. The discussion we had is that they had this kind of romantic perception, perhaps since they're not been living in India since the four, since the past uh, 14 years, right? Um, whilst the reality can be uh, a bit more contradictory than what they what they uh, 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 explain and that they illustrated. Um, their involvement in the project, though, was fairly, fairly interesting. And Locke also mentioned that uh, uh, the mansion, where there is that, that whole maze of uh, uh, both Hong Kong and, and Indian, Indian shops. Mm -hmm. And I had the occasion to go there qu quite a few times. And it really gives a, a, a very intrinsic and, and quintessential feeling of uh, uh, India or a Mumbai, or a Mumbai, Mumbai space over, mm -hmm. over there. Um, yeah. Well, um, I, I think in this project, I, um, last year and also this year, we, we, do, we do see a lot of interesting um, exchanges. Maybe not um, so obvious um, for the whole group, but then individually, definitely a lot of uh, really interesting influences. But um, actually, I, I would like to ask you a question. Um, why, to, why to include like foreign, um, yeah, foreign artists in, in the project? Because I know at the beginning, uh, Encounters didn't. 
didn't yeah involve foreign artists for in the public art festival. You mean if there is a specific necessity of including international artists, or if there and is a and how a what how precise they, uh, curatorial uh, yeah. choice? Any beneficial uh, um, influences afterward? No, the interest is to see, uh, working with Indian artists, somehow they already know what to expect and what kind of reaction mm -hmm. uh, uh, or, or feedback they will be getting from, from the people because they know how the country is, is made and what, how the mentality works. By involving uh, a foreign artists who are not so familiar with India, I wanted, we wanted to understand what kind of reaction on both sides, this experience would uh, would lead to. Um, language is one element of uh, of challenge. Um, English is spoken quite it's quite widespread, but uh, working in the public space and uh, interacting with an audience which is normally not exposed to artistic practices. Uh, Whenever there is uh, an art project, especially when uh, the uh, relational element is uh, important, then language might become a, a barrier. As you uh, pointed out, uh, Indians, especially Mumbaikers, which is people from Mumbai, tend to be extremely curious and extremely um, questioning about the work. So even in that case, if uh, uh, there is a, there is not a, a, a pattern, a, a, an understanding of the language. That kind of interaction and feedback might be might be lost. Um, so on one side is to open up the project also to see what happens when artists coming from completely different backgrounds interact with the with the city and the people living in it. On one side, I also want we all are also curious to understand from the artistic, from the artists, what is the kind of expectation, what is the kind of India or Mumbai they they imagine or they picture in their hand heads, and what kind of India they actually find. So, is there a, a big discrepancy between the imagined Mumbai mm -hmm. and the actual Mumbai? This is a, a counter question for for you. Just sorry. Yeah. Have a look and by I mean because you for your dust project you yes. actually went into the streets to actually talk with a lot of people. What, yeah, what did well, you find? When I was in Hong Kong, I talked to a lot of Indians and also I I found that uh, for that question I I think of there's a very event good very important thing or advantage as a foreign foreign artist to work on the street because you looks really different. So people will uh, will be very curious about what you are doing, or as a tourist, or as a something like you are an artist, and they will, you know, we they are willing to know what are you doing, and very helpful. And I think that's like ex uh, for foreigner foreign artists, or even because I have worked in some some uh, community art projects and I found there's a few type of people is which is very ideal for to you know uh, start a conversation in, in in a community one is foreigner that is very easy and the second one is student you look like student you're working on on a project for your school and then they will let you in your get in their house taking picture and and talk with you about their whole life and then you know this is very easy for student they can uh, collect of a, a lot of you know information and also uh, work with the people you know uh, they may need possibility and also female is better i think you, you if you if you are a guy on the street and i sometimes i work in the park i mean when i was in mumbai i have to work uh, i have to spray a sentence a story inside in the middle of the park so i just wait until it closed and then I just get in without permission. I actually I climb in, and then uh, after I you know I start working on the stencil for like maybe half hour, and suddenly I got busted by the security guard, and then they are just want me to go go go, and then just you know in the beginning they are very you know very odd or uh, shock, and then they 
<laughs> and then I try to explain what what I'm doing and then show them some photos and, and about the story. I'm bringing a story back here. I have to be here in this park. And then the security guard, actually Indian, they're very kind people. They are very easy to believe or, uh, I don't know, maybe I'm a suddenly a Chinese Look, l looking like a Chinese in the in the middle of the night, you appear in the park, like very very strange for them. But but then I think I cannot do this kind of project in Hong Kong. I'm for sure because I've I've done also spray some work in the first first image. You can see there's a very big uh, train terminal in Hong Kong under the, like the metro in Hong Kong MTR. You don't even can you can't even you know do anything in the, there. Because you know, uh, you, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, for too many security, yeah, too many security too reason many, and the CCTV yeah, everywhere, CCTV, yeah. and they don't want to discuss. They don't want to know what are you doing. Not try to understand. Uh, I know, yeah, Mumbai is a very. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, actually, I, I plan, I plan to do that, but I, I, I know there's like very high chance that I will get busted or, or get away, but then I spent few hours there, then, you know, I, I, I spread like six meters uh, the stencil. I just try to, you know, see and wait who will come to me and ask me to leave. But then, like, for, for a whole an hour, like, low, they, they already get used to my existence. So, so I don't know, I'm just trying a little bit, a little bit doing this. Because that is just, in the beginning, I removed the stencil, there's nothing there on the, on the floor. So they, they don't know uh, what I'm doing. That, but I'm showing them, like, they, it will collect some dust and then it will disappear, something like that. And then they, you know, actually there's a police station next to the station. And I also talk a lot with the police and, you know, this kind of stuff. And, and in the end, actually, the security and the police, they help you out. Yeah, 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 yeah I forget to that. No. Uh, in, in the park, actually, that security guard, after they understand what I'm doing, and I'm doing something very serious as for myself, or as for, for the people in the storyteller in Hong Kong, and then they just you know help me out with holding the corner of the stencil, the sticker, which is you know that would be very nice because it, it saved me a lot of time. So they two security card, they they holding it like this, and then I just I can do it like in in, in like less than ten minutes. So th this is like uh, very exciting experiences when you work in the foreign country. Because um, an another question I came up um, now is um, a discussion we had before about the license. Because I know um, Art Oxygen is really like professional now about getting different kinds of licenses in Mumbai. And and then at one point I was like pondering, like questioning myself. Because in Hong Kong we also have this debate or discussion among uh, artists and also like social activists like, about how to use the public space. If the public space is, you know, if it belongs to the public, we shouldn't need to apply for any licenses and then they go in. So I, I also was uh, asking Log and Claudio about this and um, and how does, how would the license, you know, help you out at all in your art making processes and uh. what do you think? Yeah, how do you well, see? I, I think they they thing? get a permission f to do some because uh, most of the site is not uh, the. He did, the you the, didn't yeah. get the official permission to yeah, yeah. spray in. No, the in the beginning, station. I I was, I plan to you know ask for because there's a Sheikh temple. I want to spray a sentence outside the wall of the temple. That's so so they just <laughs> <laughs> I just try to do it very officially. So. And I meet the, the guy, and then they say, "Oh, okay, wait," and then ask for another, you know, more like a boss. And then after a few meeting, and then uh, they wa they ask me to, uh, you know, wait for it. I have to send a very black and white email or something like that. And then I just try to, uh, because I I don't have much time to, you know, during this kind of process. So I decided to do it in other way, which is I found another path platform very close to the temple. So I spray a a daily story about uh, a a a sheikh uh, uh, talk about it, his you know daily life, and then I spread somewhere near the temple, and then after that meeting or you know uh, that a lot of travel with the you know the people in the temple, so I decided to do it you know in in a f more an like play way an official way and playing with the that gray area. I'm not you know really. 
destroying something, but I just leave it like this, and yeah, to see whether I can do it. And I, you know, I just go and try. I am not sure I can do it, but then some surprisingly, it's quite you know smooth the process. But if I might elaborate on that, um, you're right that the public spa space is for for everyone to to use and 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 to intervene. You also need to consider that Mumbai is one, if not the most densely populated city in the world. So public space means that there is always someone ready to take that small portion of space existing. Therefore, uh, uh, the protocols and, and regulations as far as usage of public space is concerned tend to be um, pretty well defined and, and structured. Um, you mentioned about the whole uh, um, permissions process and I would just spend a few minutes to describe you because it gives you a really good understanding on what are the different layers on which social layers on which the city is built on. Um, normally, as Locke did, the first people you need to interact with is with the people using, working, living, sleeping in the space that you want to use. You need to have them on your side. You need them to be familiar with, what, with your face. And then you need that to understand that what you're doing is not going to harm them whatsoever. Being them some guards, being them some uh, homeless people mm -hmm. living in the place where you're intervening. So the, the first endorsement, if you want to put it like that, is from the actual people using the space. The second one is from local association, local residents associations, so people living in the buildings which might be affected by what you do. Um, what they normally will give us is a letter saying that they have no problem with Art Oxygen doing whatever they want to do. With that letter signed and stamped, we go to the local police station, which quite surprisingly tend to be extremely efficient. We go there, we tell them what we want to do, they give us a date, a time in which we have to go there, meet with the inspector. The inspector will meet us at the, so, at the uh, uh, agreed date and time, give us the go ahead if I have no problems with what we're doing, obviously. And with that, we are almost, almost set. The first, the, the fourth and last step is to go to the local municipality, to the town hall, and ask for their permission. That is the tough step because they tend to be very uh, inefficient. They tend not to be there. The person in charge tend not to be there. So they take the whole process the timing of the whole process gets uh, 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 winded and uh, prolonged in a very substantial way. But the first three steps are normally quite um, easy and relationally also quite interesting. The fourth one is a bit more frustrating. No, I, I think um, on one hand, the organ organizer or the, the curator is, um, is responsible for it, providing some kind of uh, framework definitely, so that then the artist can also play with the boundary then, mm -hmm. and then and you can decide like, how, how far you want to go. We normally the provide area, the, yeah. the so institutionalized it's, it's framework with <laughs> all the permissions, but then like in the case of Locke, we, we have no problem at times, we encourage the artists to go beyond the uh, uh, predefined and the restricted areas where we're going to work with, within and explore the city and see what happens on a more uh, unorganized, uh, on a more uh, uh, anarchic mm -hmm. way, if you, if you pass the, the term. Mm -hmm. And how about Momo? Because I know, uh, I remember at the beginning, before you went to Mumbai, uh, you expect um, maybe a certain kind of audience to join, and then later on, how, how did it work out, and um, how did you deal with the unexpected elements? I yeah. think this is the first time I went to India, um, beyond making artwork, and I always found that um, it is a place, quite a lot of unexpected things, event will be happens. And uh, the really, really, short to me 
is the first time, the second time I went to Mobile to place the music box in the beach, and uh, I expected some some parents would come to play the music box, and I find out that the first rounds of the, all the audience around the mu played music box, they are impaired children, impaired in their death, death, and uh, I just look at what they are listening. And <laughs> we, <laughs> really strange to me. I, I think I've never, you know, um, think about that kind, how, how he worked. But, but of course, it gives me quite a lot of the, another inspirations to think about how to run a work without prepare or prejudged or perceive things. And I think uh, it, it is quite good. And then I also think that um, India is a place uh, having a lot of rules, the regulations. Just like the first time you apply the visa, you have to fill in a lot, a lot of things. And uh, even the format of uh, uh, leave application form from your working place is absolutely could be the same. And then you find when you arrive there, you don't have to follow all the rules. <laughs> Maybe you already protect or prepare for us. It's no one with following all the, all the rules like this. Yeah, it's quite nice. <laughs> um, do we have time to take? Do, uh, do we have any questions from the audience members uh, who would like to ask the artist any particular? Yeah. Uh, Mic is. Uh, hello, thank you for this uh, wonderful talk and uh, uh, I would like to ask you both if doing these kind of projects made you more aware of some social problems around the communities that you are engaging with or if it's just um, a superficial contact that you have with them in a specific time, in a specific context and further on uh, there's no development because uh, a lot of things you have been questioned uh, regarding community art and artists within the community and the social um, engagement that they have and the role that they have. So in this way, since you also talked about the, the Indian community in Hong Kong, if uh, you detected something uh, along the way that uh, might lead you to develop other projects in that sense, for example. Mm -hmm. what do you well, um, for me, because uh, most of the works that I've done in Hong Kong is pretty much quite related to or, or responding to the social issue in Hong Kong. But then <coughs> I found that when once I leave my own city, and then I went into, I go into a you know foreign uh, environment. I will uh, do a different kind of words, uh, which is not that heavy or not touched to the you know really the problem in the community. I will just do it more like like a you know a content. I'm I'm talking with the person. I, I mean I mean the people, everyone, as a person in front of me, and then I will. Uh, do develop or some project that is you know more easy or more touching the personal intimate uh, com conversation. And wh once I go come back to Hong Kong, then I, you know I, I watch news and you are very angry about what is ha happening in Hong Kong. Or I sometimes I work in the um, community art and then go inside the village, and then I will do s some other works. So I found that. For me, I don't know, I will keep myself like that in that way when I you know, come across... Because for uh, understanding other culture or the, the problem, I always believe that if I'm not the person uh, who is, you know, really belong to that place, I, I will not take the problem or the, the, the issue of that particular area as much as I, when, I, yeah, when I was in Hong Kong. So, but but then I will see the common, the common, you know, what 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 we are in common in in that sense, yeah. And then I think um, if 
I do not know the residency. If you do an exchange project, you said that two months is a long time, or three months is a long time, or half year, or even seven or eight years. But to me, I think it's, it's very important that when I get back to my place, my, you know, in Hong Kong, how I continue to care about the people or the same situations around the society or the community. And also, maybe um, in my building, um, there's quite a lot of um, South um, Asia people living around. And then um, the downstairs, it opens, uh, runs some small shops. But because the Empress Museum is coming, and then in Jordan, um, quite a lot of shops disappear. And at that time, because I'm working in, you know, in India, then I, I start to uh, try to help them to translate things into English, to, you know, to express their wants and their, their need. And I think, um, I think this is how it influenced me. I do not know how it could, my work influenced the people. I do not expect, I just like a political people and then, you know, can influence a lot. But just, you know, just people live around you and neighborhood. And that time you look at the eyes and, you know, up and down in the elevator, you, you think that that's a relationship begins. <laughs> and I try to remember the names um, that I ignored quite, you know, before, yeah. But it's also in the nature of the exchange project to try and understand, obviously, time pl plays a, a, a relevant role. Mm. Um, and if I might say, lock work, for instance, you could tell that this time you had, had the time to elaborate both interacting with the Indian community here in, uh, in Hong Kong and also knowing for your, from your previous experience what is the uh, geographical and cultural configuration of Mumbai. You knew how to move around and, mm -hmm. uh, and the project actually was a, 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 a mirror this kind of evolution. The project though engages with the, with, with the city as a whole. It's not focused with particular, uh, with issues affecting particular communities, which would be uh, uh, absurd to ask one person coming from outside to deal with, because they would just grasp, grasp the surface for that. It's also difficult to work with Indian artists on those kind of uh, uh, lines. But um, yeah, the starting point is the city in itself, and obviously as a, a Momo pointed out um, the social layers and all the intricate kind of relations uh, <coughs> defining the city are pretty much in your face at the very moment you land in, uh, in Mumbai. So it takes time to understand them, but it takes very, very quickly to see that there is something extremely complex and extremely uh, layered in front of your, of, of your eyes. <laughs> Well, um, I'm, I'm afraid the actually time's running out, but um, just to uh, let you know also um, the documentation of all the projects, uh, besides Mo Wen and Locke, there are also other Hong Kong artists who joined the, the pro, uh, festival. So it is actually um, uh, exhibited at CNG Art Prime in Prince Edward. I, I can probably leave some leaflet out. If you're interested, you can check it out again. And uh, from our previous experiences, um, even though some audience members, they don't, they did not join or participate in the particular art projects. When they come to see the show and, and also learn about different things, then I think some of them um, kind of get op um, their mind open up with some of the cre creative uh, elements. So perhaps in the, in the long run, it would make a change, hopefully, yeah. So, but um, thanks everyone for thank being here thank tonight. You. And thank you. Yes, thanks.